You study shows? In Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19. For what reason could it be initiated? If you're a biblical student. In Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19. Oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies. Ladies and gentlemen, let's open our eyes to comprehend some of these things which is going on. Let's also watch this video and see the happenings around. Tanesta Djokovic denied entry into Australia. Have you received any vaccination against COVID? I have not. Why? I understand that uh, and support fully uh, the freedom to choose, you know, whether you want to get vaccinated or not. And uh, I have not uh, spoken about this before and I have not disclosed my medical record uh, and my vaccination status because uh, I, I had the right to keep that private and discreet. But as I see, there's a lot of uh, wrong conclusions and assumptions out there. I think it's important to speak up about that um, and, and, and justify certain things, right? So I, um, I was never against uh, uh, vaccination. I understand that globally everyone is trying to put a big effort into handling this virus and, and seeing a, hopefully a, a, an end soon to this virus. And vaccination is probably the biggest effort that was made, probably half of the planet was, was vaccinated. And I fully respect that. But I've always uh, represented and, and always supported uh, the freedom to choose what you put into your body. And for me, that is essential. It's really the principle of, of understanding what is right and what is wrong for you. And me as an elite professional athlete, I've always carefully reviewed, assessed, everything that comes in from the supplements, food, the water that I drink or sports drinks, anything really that comes into my body as a fuel. Based on all the informations that I got, uh, I, I decided not to take the vaccine uh, as of today. So do you have, as of today? Yes, I keep my mind open because we are all, we are all trying to find collectively uh, a best possible solution to end COVID. Right? I mean, no one really wants to be in this kind of situation that we've been in collectively for, for two years. I'm part of the a sport, a very global sport, that is played every single week in a different location. So, you know, I understand the consequences of my decision. And one of the consequences of my decision was not going to Australia, and I was prepared not to go. And I understand that not being vaccinated today, I, you know, I'm unable to travel to most of the tournaments at the moment. And, and that's the price you're willing to pay? I, that, that is the price that I'm willing to pay. Ultimately, are you prepared to forego the chance to be the greatest player that ever picked up a racket, statistically, because you feel so strongly about this jab? Yes. I do. But as things stand, if this means that you miss the French Open, is that a price you'd be willing to pay? Yes, that is the price that I'm willing to pay. And if it means that you miss Wimbledon this year, again, that's a price you're willing to pay? Yes. Why, Novak? Why? Why do you... Because the principles of uh, decision-making on my body uh, are more important than any title or anything else. I, I'm. I'm trying to be in tune with my body um, as much as I possibly can. What do you say directly to anti-vaccination campaigners around the world who proudly declare Novak Djokovic is one of us? I say that everyone has the right to, to choose to act or say whatever they feel is appropriate for them. And I have never said that I'm part of that movement. You know, no one in the whole process during uh, Australian saga has asked me on my stance or my opinion on vaccination. No one. So I could not really express, you know, 
what I feel and where my stance is, neither in the legal process, neither outside. So uh, it's, it's really unfortunate that there has been this kind of misconception and wrong conclusion that has been made uh, around the world uh, based, based upon, you know, something that I completely disagree with. Visa Council that made vaccine exemption for all. And that leads us to the next point, persecution and discrimination. As against liberation. So, here's what happened to Novak Djokovic. In just a few hours, the Australian Open gets underway without the defending champ Novak Djokovic. The tennis great flew out overnight after a final ruling on his deportation. Here's ABC's Britt Clennett. Tonight, Novak Djokovic deported after losing his last-ditch effort to stay and defend his Australian Open title. The Serbian tennis star flying to Dubai just hours after a three-judge panel ruled unanimously to uphold his second visa cancellation. The orders of the court are, one, the amended application be dismissed with costs. The nine-time Australian Open champion argued he entered the country on a medical exemption because he had recovered from COVID-19 last month. His visa was cancelled by Australian border officials upon his arrival at the airport. Djokovic later won an appeal, allowing him to stay in the country and practice until the court decided his fate. Djokovic releasing a statement after the ruling saying he was extremely disappointed and adding, I'm uncomfortable that the focus of the past few weeks has been on me and I hope that we can now all focus on the game and tournament I love. And I love certain statements that he did he made. When it comes to my body, it's a personal choice. Why? Because it involves you and your God. There's a law that governs the physical body called nature's law or physical law or health law. It is as sacred as the moral law. And we are both physical and moral beings. So if you transgress nature's law, you transgress, you have automatically transgressed the moral law. The devil knows this. And he is resorting to all avenues to make us corporates in this regard. And he's using the right arm. Anytime there is the institutionalization of a likeness or an image to the original, or who fail to comply become accusers of the brethren and persecuted. These are facts. Anytime the world seeks to institute a likeness, original one more, when the world begins to institute a likeness, the enemy is there. Whoever fails to go along with it is persecuted. In fact, it began in Aden. Cain killed the brother Abel because Cain had instituted a likeness to the original. And Abel sought to go according to God's way. He was persecuted and killed. Nebuchadnezzar would have killed Shadrach and friends if he had caught them that they failed to eat of his food, body, health. He had instituted a likeness because the meat that he sought to give them was unclean. And the only reason that we cite, maybe a time will come that we are going to discuss it. The only reason why Daniel and friends did not refuse the king's food was because uh, the, the food was unclean. The Bible has already talked about it. So read what the testimonies have, have, have said about drugs and see. Read what the testimonies have said about drugs, whether they are good for you. Read and see whether you have immunity already. <laughs> read, please read. The only, reason why, the, only, the reason why Daniel failed to eat the king's food was not only because the food was unclean, was not only because it was idolatrous. The other reason is that the king resorted to coercion. Folks, when it, when it comes to me and my God, no human being is to interfere. And when it comes to what I take into my body, whether I'm sick or not, it's between me and my God. So, Daniel and friends ended up in the fiery furnace when Nebuchadnezzar instituted a likeness of the original. This then happened in the Dark Ages when the world instituted the abomination of desolation in the Dark Ages. There was persecution. Now the right arm has packed another persecution. And this is what went on. The unvaccinated were 
locked down for 10 days in Austria. What, 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 what crime have they committed? They are not going according to the narrative. You have to go according to the narrative. You have to take artificial. Or else I have immunity. The world says no. And let's watch what happened in Austria. After watching, you can see what is going on. And this premier in Alberta has something to tell us. Let's watch that one also. Alberta's new premier, Danielle Smith, is starting her term on the back foot, apologizing for statements she made on day one of the job. She's been under fire since she said that people who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 are the most discriminated group she has ever seen. The community that faced the most restrictions on their freedoms in the last year were those who made a choice not to be vaccinated. I don't think I've ever experienced a situation in my lifetime where a person was fired from their job or not allowed to watch their kids play hockey or not allowed to go visit a loved one in long-term care or hospital or not allowed to go get on a plane to either go across the country to see family or even travel across the border. So they have been the most discriminated against group that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. That's a pretty extreme level of discrimination that we have seen. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddie Sayers. I'm here in Vienna, the capital of Austria. You can see the Rathaus, the parliament building just behind me. And it's an apparently ordinary, quite gloomy November morning except it's not actually an ordinary morning because at midnight last night, a new law came into place which said that anyone who is not vaccinated is not legally allowed to leave their home except for certain prescribed reasons. In other words, it is the world's first lockdown for the unvaccinated. I wanted to come here to find out what does a society feel like where a third of the population has been kept at home in mandatory house arrest what do the people who are walking around feel about that new reality? And perhaps most importantly, what does it feel like for those people stuck at home? I think it comes much too late. And I think, I think it's very unfair of people who are not for health reasons, not taking a vaccine because that's obvious you know but all the others they're crazy and all the trouble we have is due to those people who believe in I don't know the earth is flat <laughs> so how long would you be happy for them to be stuck at home for uh, I don't think that will help that's the thing but what is what makes me hopeful is that now some of those people who refuse to have a vaccine are now thinking of having second thoughts because they have no access to restaurants, they have no access to theatre or anything. And I know people like that do now all of a sudden, they're in a hurry to get a vaccine. So you're not worried that a whole little part of society is just invisible now, stuck at home? If the, if the majority of society depends on idiots, then we can't be helped and that's the end of society. No, no, I don't think. We had it for everybody some time ago, so I think it's now for a special group and they should do it. No, I think it's, I think it's the right way because, uh, because um, uh, the, the um, cases are getting higher and higher and higher and the problems are the not vaccinated people, so I'm fine with that. Isn't it true that you can still transmit if you're vaccinated? I, what, what do you mean? You can still pass the corona on. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think everybody should do what we can do yeah. and to be vaccinated, it's the very best option we have. So everybody should do that. You're not worried? No. I'm not solidarity with these people. And I believe that uh, it's a good decision from the government. So you don't feel sorry for them stuck at home? No, why should be punished for the people who just not uh, uh, have uh, uh, the intention to be uh, uh, vaccinated and uh, integrated in our community. Do you know any? So we wanted to get out of town and talk to some people who were not being vaccinated and find out what their experience was. We're about to meet a couple who are both trapeze artists. They're circus performers and actors 
and neither of them have chosen to be vaccinated and because of that they are currently in lockdown. I think this is it. Guten Tag. Hi. Hi. Hello. Is Mia home too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Hi. Freddy. Nice to meet you. Mia. Lovely to meet you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So I am here with Mia and Chris, um, who have kindly asked us in for a cup of tea. Um, they are both acrobats and performers. Chris, you're also a fire eater. Mm, sometimes. And, and more. <laughs> and more. Um, and you have chosen not to be vaccinated. So you're caught up in this whole story. I guess the first question has to be why? Why, why not take the vaccine? My choice was in, on first hand that it's mine. I really can't understand why I should want or why I have to give the responsibility for my health in the hands of the government. Mm -hmm. This made no sense for me and especially no sense for the according to the situation. And Mia, you felt the same? Sure, yeah, uh, but for me, I think like my two main reasons are in the first place because um, I, I do believe in science mm -hmm. at some level, of course, and um, I think the, the way things are being handling, they are not very much um, fitting to the scientific method. I think science, science is a lot about debate and then since the, the whole crisis began everybody who spoke against uh, the government narrative was just uh, punished somehow mm. and I think this is it's a sign for me that uh, science has not been uh, done openly and I think science can just be done openly you need to hear, to hear all the many voices from the scientific community. Did you feel that the, the vaccine, when it arrived, you just didn't trust it? Or were you frightened of it? Did you think it was potentially dangerous? Or what was your... How did that fit in when it happened? The first thing was like a, a kind of a sense of strangeness. For me it was very strange that um, from the very beginning, the vaccine was appointed as the only solution. Like, we will be free when there will be a vaccine. Like, they could not even know it. Like, if you were really making serious science, they would try to find solution in different areas. And there is not a rule who says uh, you just find a solution for a virus through a vaccine. I think they should have opened the a spectrum of opportunities and research in many different areas and that was not the case at all like from the very beginning it was there will be peace again when there will be a vaccine and i think this was already my red my first red flag because how they can possibly know <laughs> and then yeah. when it came out it was a second big red flag because i i personally I don't really trust the big pharma industry. I think uh, 